And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are you and you and you and you? It is so great to see all of you there. I see all of you from all around the world. You having a good day today? Well, if you're not, this is the place that's going to lift your spirits because this is the Gym Masters Show Live. We're in our 10th week of broadcasts, and this is the place for light levity and love, or as we call it, levity, which we coined the phrase just a couple of weeks ago. And it's a pleasure to have you here. We've had some extraordinary experiences on this show. So many great people from around the world who have been tuning into the Gym Masters Show Live. They've been really enjoying our conversations, sort of our easy, free-flowing style. We hear about positivity and inspiration, good music, great commentary. Uh, you learn something new every day. We take you behind the scenes as well. As you know, if you're an avid fan, faithful fan of this broadcast, uh, not only do we have extraordinary guests, many of them are friends of mine, and then others hop on from television and movies and, uh, and Broadway and music and inspiration and food and just think about everything, life coaches and scientists and Everybody from just about every genre, because this is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series designed to have fun, to inspire, to educate, and uh, to lighten the load a little bit for all of us. As you know, uh, or may not know, if you're joining us for the very first time, uh, this I do professionally in the, uh, in the real world, in television and radio as a host and journalist, TV and radio personality, and a presenter voiceover artist, a narrator, stage MC, writer, producer. I uh, have worked with public television for years. I uh, had a show for iHeartRadio on the air for many years. Still work in television and radio. I've worked for networks and stations and newspapers and so much more. 10 weeks ago, we uh, built this home studio here and we created the Gym Masters Show Live. And it was something people wanted me to do for a long time. And I'm so happy that I had this time uh, there's a lot of time we all have these days to build and create and format this uh, awesome experience here. And thanks to everybody who watches. Thanks to everybody who uh, enjoys the show and comments all the time from all around the world and uh, just tells me how much they are moved by the show. The show is continuing to grow and expand. You guys sharing the links, you guys having watch parties, you guys telling everybody about it. That is how the show continues to grow. It's with you telling everybody, hey, I watched this Jim Masters show live uh, on YouTube, Facebook, or at Jim Masters TV. Uh, just about every single night you can find us here. And every show is something different. And every show has a lot of levity involved in it as well. And every show is pretty cool because I have fun as uh, your host engaging with you guys. And it's also a very interactive show and very viewer centric in my professional work, but also viewer centric here on the Gym Masters show live. So really cool having you guys here, really a blessing having you here. And uh, I toast to all of you. And we're going to do that right now. We have our little drink, our little cocktail here. If you follow this show, then you know that we always raise a glass to all of our viewers all around. We toast to you and you and you and you and you. We thank you very much for being with us tonight. Hope you have your little uh, drink of choice and uh, all of your friends are here as well on the Gym Master Show Live. Again, we're coming at you live. If you miss this show and you'd like to see it again, or perhaps maybe uh, there's a show that you want to see previously, like last night, we had some really cool people. We had legendary 
Hollywood actress and producer Sky Aubrey with us and uh, veteran screenwriter and producer Edward Jordan with us last night. And boy, was that a barrel of laughs. It was so much fun going back in time and celebrating their work. Also, the night before, we had legendary composer and lyricist and uh, vocalist and jazz pianist uh, Billy Stritch on with us too. We had Anne Hampton Calloway on. We've had uh, Mairead Nesbitt from Celtic Woman and the list goes on and on. Rain Pryor as well, daughter of legendary uh, comedian Richard Pryor. She's a phenomenal comedian. She's also a wonderful person. And um, she is a writer, a producer. She's a screenwriter. She is uh, working on a fantastic series with Norman Lear. She's also a dear friend of mine as well. And it is Rain's birthday. And I told her when we were chatting today, I said, Rain, I'm going to wish you a happy birthday today on the show. So it is my dear friend Rain Pryor's birthday. We did a full interview with Rain here on the Gym Masters Show Live. And if you want to see that interview, go to YouTube, go to Gym Masters TV, click subscribe, subscribe to the channel. I don't know why they call it subscribe because you're not paying anything. It's free, but just click the red button, subscribe. We would love that. And scroll down and you'll see all the archive shows, 10 weeks of cool shows, but you'll also see the interview with Rain Pryor. Again, uh, her father, and she talks about her relationship with her father, Richard Pryor, uh, as well, the legendary and hysterical comedian. And um, it's a really cool interview. It's like a two-hour interview we did. Uh, and she was at her home, and the dogs are barking. It's just a lot of fun. So it's her birthday, and we wish her a very, very happy birthday. So let's go together, and why don't we sing her happy birthday, all right? Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rain. Happy birthday to you. So there you go. Our fabulous friend, Rain Pryor, live here on the Gym Master Show Live. A quick little happy birthday wish to you, and we raise a glass to you as well, Rain. And let's welcome everybody. Of course, we have to welcome our cast of characters. Now, again, remember, the show is Light, Levity, and Love, or Levity. So look who's here tonight. Yes, our dear friend, George, <laughs> what happened, George? You've been drinking? George Burns' glasses are crooked. All right, there he is. There's George. And again, if you're just joining me saying, why is this guy holding a George Burns doll? This was my aunt's, got passed down to me. And uh, she got this when uh, George turned 100, commemorative uh, George Burns doll. So there he is with the cigar. And he's looking at all of you and he sees you and you and you and you. He's one of our cast of characters. George, your glasses are crooked. Have you been drinking? Uh, so he says hello to everybody as well. Uh, you can't go wrong when you have George Burns on the show, right? And of course, another cast of characters here at the Gym Masters Show Live is somebody. Now, if I don't show these characters, everybody will post where, where happened to George and where's Jeannie? Jeannie's in there as well. She's in her bottle nice and clear doesn't it this is cool since we did our studio upgrade this past week and uh, put a lot of time and effort into the studio upgrade everything looks so 3d now doesn't it isn't that cool you see genie in the bottle she is uh, <laughs> she is blinking hello to all of you then uh, another cast of character that we've got here on the gym master show live is silver you guys always look for silver what was really cool last night actress sky aubrey fell in love with silver. She actually has a silver lab, she says, there in Florida with her family. Uh, so there is our silver. Got this on a television shoot in Europe last year. He originally hails from Switzerland and he greets you and he sees all of you guys as well. So there is silver. Everybody looks for silver. So he's there and another one. Again, I really need to be an octopus. I need several more arms here. But what the heck, it's all for you guys. And there's your other friend, Jimmy. Jimmy's here. Jimmy says hello. He greets you. <laughs> Not cool. I mean, look at that face. Now you can, it looks 3D with the new studio upgrade, huh? So this is a childhood toy, actually, and it's pretty well preserved. But uh, he's there and he says hello to everybody uh, all around the world. And everybody looks for Jimmy as well. So we'll set Jimmy aside over here just for now. And one other thing we do, because again, we go big time here on the Gym Masters show live and a little lights, camera, action, right? You got to do it the right way. If you're going to do something, you got to do it right. So here's your lights, camera, and action to get the show started. 
And we've got texts coming in. I hear vibrations. People are already commenting. That's fantastic. All right. Lights, camera, and action. The Gym Masters Show is live with lights, camera, and action right now. Good to have you with us, everybody. And we have a phenomenal guest. And in just a moment, I'll be welcoming to the show. And uh, very excited and uh, honored to have this incredible gentleman on the show. He is a legend in the music industry. He is a renowned musician and trumpet player. He's worked with uh, James Brown and so many notables as well, and part of uh, James's band. And uh, he's extraordinary. And he's actually going to, which I'm so excited about, he's being gracious to play for us. He's going to be playing live. Now, something very special for you guys, which I really appreciate Holly doing, he doesn't normally do this. He normally doesn't do interviews and this kind of a thing. So this is something very exclusive, very special, and we really appreciate him taking his time. He is in beautiful Nashville, where he said it's about 250 degrees with 150% humidity, <laughs> but he's in his air conditioning and he's surrounded by his trumpet and, uh, and lots of love there at his home. So um, we're gonna welcome him in just a minute. First, we like to welcome our viewers from around the world and say hello to everybody. It's uh, great to have you here. Beautiful day here uh, along the coast. As you know, I, long, I live along the coast, the home studios here along the coast. We are in the greater New York City area uh, between New York and Boston, right on the coast. Beautiful day in the upper 70s, but we're going into our heat wave. They say it's gonna be, you know, the heat indices are gonna be like 100 in the next couple of days. So uh, we would either be diving in the ocean or uh, staying in a bathtub with ice or just turning the air conditioner on high and crank it. All right, Eileen Barker is here from Australia. Eileen, I love when you say that Australian phrase, uh, a big ripper, awesome star. Yes, Holly really is, but he's very humble too. He doesn't see himself in the way that maybe many of you do. And I like that because that's the way to be. That's how I do it too. I don't see myself in the same. You know, other people may say that because I've been on television radio for years and all this kinds of stuff. But, you know, it's, it's good to be humble. And he really is. And he's super talented. So she is in. She's an avid fan. She's been following for years. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, all of my social media. Eileen is in Australia where it's morning. So we say good day to everybody watching in Australia. And I love the word ripper when she says we're having a ripper of a time, a real Australian phrase. And um, she's amazing. She lives in the Midlands. If you got this running joke we've been doing lately, she's in the Midlands, east of Perth and Western Australia. So good day as you start your day and you also enter winter there in Australia. Willie, good to see you, Willie, in Holland, in the beautiful Netherlands. Um, I know that you have a busy day and you also have a, um, you're sort of on like a mini trip, mini vacation. We saw that luggage that you posted yesterday. Hello, have fun tonight and wonderful to have you here. And we, and you're watching on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. We always show you the Dutch flowers. This is really cool. These are, these are actually wood hand painted in Australia, Australia, in Holland, the Netherlands. So we always toast to you because what Willie does is Willie takes naps during the day. <laughs> she takes naps during the day just so she can wake up because it's 1 a.m., like 1.15 a.m. in the Netherlands right now. So she's always watching and we send our hello to Willie. And Anne is here from SoCal, from Southern California. Always great to see you. Uh, and thanks for all the wonderful love and the comments and telling people and sharing the links and all the cool things you're doing. Really appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoy the show. I get so many private messages too all day long on my Facebook pages, Instagram, Twitter, texting, people just expressing how much they're really enjoying the show. And that means a lot. It'll keep me driving forward to create more cool episodes here for you using some of my professional television radio background to, to entertain all of you here. Hey, Mr. Lovety, how are you doing this evening? Well, now, Linda, that you are here in Florida in the Sunshine State, we are fantastic. We were waiting for you. Good to have you here. Lovety is the word for the show. I know that was a word that was a Freudian slip. We created something special together on the show. Good evening, Jim. Looking forward to your show tonight. Thank you very much. So am I. And we're so happy to have you, Merlin, who is in Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada. We have a global audience here and we have people that once they watch the show, they come back. And that really means they're getting something from the show. 
uh, that, that moves them and entertains them. And I love that. Uh, good friend Stan in Connecticut. Go, Jim. Thank you, Stan. Hope you guys are doing well. And Carlene and Joy and the whole team there. I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for tuning into the show. And Tina Tin is here. Tina, good to have you here on the show. Welcome. Uh, where are you watching from? Love to know where you're watching from. Uh, post a comment again and love to have you here. The wonderful cabaret star, Rini Katz, who we had on the show just a week or so ago. And what a really inspiring and moving interview we had with her with great music and more. You can see that archived on Jim Masters TV on the uh, YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube channel. You can see all the episodes. Good to see you there. Now, here's the running joke. We have Eileen Barker in the Midlands of Western uh, Australia. And then Rini popped in the night that uh, Eileen said that. And she goes, well, guess where I am? I'm in the Midlands of Flushing, Queens, New York. So hello to you, Rini. Uh, and your mom's still celebrating her birthday. We uh, sang happy birthday. You had me and Billy Stritch sing your mom happy birthday the other night. How cool is that? We're going to find that happening. Good to see you as well. And um, Jacqueline, nice to see you. You've been an avid fan of the show, watching every night, spreading the word and spreading the love. We appreciate that. Good to have you with us tonight here on the show as well. And... Hi, Jim and everyone. That's fantastic. Thanks for writing in. And we love all of this. Again, the show is very viewer centric, very viewer interactive. It isn't just about me. It is about us. Thank you for sharing your show with everybody. So love your show, Linda. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Continue to tell your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, so they can tune in and enjoy the show as well. And yes, clink for the toasting that we just did. Renee, an avid fan. We love Renee watching in Iowa as well. Good to see you as well, Renee. And uh, always a pleasure to have you here. And everybody says hello to everybody. And uh, Christopher is in the New Love Express uh, band in uh, Ohio. And he's been following me for years on Facebook and then hopped on as a viewer on this show. We uh, salute you as well, Christopher. Good to have you here. We got to get back to doing the viewer of the week, folks, too. Last couple, about two weeks, we haven't done a viewer of the week. We're going to be doing that soon. We're going to salute another viewer as we've done in the past. Kathleen Walker in New York City. Hi, Jim. I'm here with my mom, Elvira. Got bad reception where you are, but for now, she sends her love. Terrific. Well, hats off to you, and thanks for joining us as well. It's a pleasure to have you here, and uh, love to your mom. Hope to see you soon, too. We got to get back on that Rachel Ray show. Remember we were on the Rachel Ray show? That was a lot of fun. You're drinking blackberry wine spritzer. Cool. Very nice. And happy birthday to Rain Pryor. Everybody is saying happy birthday to the wonderful Rain. That's really nice. And I'll just scroll through some of these real quick so you can see them. Everybody wishing happy birthday to dear Rain. Again, if you want to see that interview again or you want to uh, see it for the first time, it's on the YouTube channel. And she gets into a really good conversation with me about growing up in Hollywood. And then, you know, she lives on the East Coast and she's a really, really dear friend. And Sharon, it's great to see you as well. And Linda Hutchinson, it's great to see you. Rini, wishing Rain a happy birthday as well. Hello, Jim. Got dinner in early tonight so I can tune in. Excited about tonight's guest. Oh, that's great. You got your dinner in early so you can see the show and my guest, Holly Farris. That's fantastic. That is commitment. And uh, we really appreciate you doing that. Oh, boy. Look at all of this. And uh, yes, the Skip Turner Band. I know you love when I mention that. And hello from Jamestown, Tennessee. Hi, Holly. Hey, Alan. Welcome to the show. Good to have you with us watching on YouTube. I hope you'll make this a regular part of your show. We've got amazing guests coming up. And even when there's no guests, we just have a lot of fun. Uh, Linda Hutchinson from sunny Alabama. Missed a couple of nights. No problem. Go to YouTube. Go to Gym Masters TV. And uh, you are going to see all the shows. They're saved and archived on YouTube. Uh, New England represents uh, Karen Levitt watching in New Hampshire. Good to see you as well. Boy, it's tough to keep up with all these great comments. Uh, June, Rachel Sun Aspa, dear friend of mine and Holly's. She's on vacation. Hello to June and Jerry and Jonathan and Jacob, that whole uh, Aspa clan there. Uh, they're watching in Hancock, Massachusetts on vacation as well. And you are watching again in New Hampshire. Really looking forward to listening to Holly. You're going to love it. Uh, can't wait to hear Holly Farris play the trumpet. 
And I love this. This is what I love about this show, the spirit that all of you have created along with me, where you welcome and you're so nice to our guests. We all welcome him. Absolutely. That's the way things should be in life. Um, you know, welcoming and empathetic and kind and warm and you just have a good time. Um, great show, Jim Masters. Big shout out to my old college trumpet player, buddy, Holly Farris, Stuart King. That is awesome. He sees these comments right now and uh, that's really, really cool. And again, Ernestine Webb in North Carolina. Hi, Jim. Hope everyone is good. We are good. You guys are good. So with all of that said, how do you like the cool hat? I think the last time I wore this hat, I changed up everything. It was when uh, the Broadway veteran uh, Danny Bolero was on, remember? And we were talking about his incredible career and it was really cool. That was a fun episode. You can see that episode as well. Uh, the Broadway television and film star, Danny Bolero. He is available on the YouTube channel as well. Let me tell you about our amazing guest who is uh, in our luxurious green room. We have supplied him with champagne and lobster and, and cheese and crackers. Maybe not. <laughs> He's got a big mug of something in that mug, and he is there with his trumpet and so much more. I just want to uh, show you a quick photo here, and then I will tell you about our very special guest. Love that picture, huh? Some really cool pictures we have here. And uh, But here is our incredible, illustrious guest joining us here exclusively. Again, we're so honored because he doesn't generally do this. So this is something very special and we appreciate him doing that. Holly Ferris, of course, legendary professional musician, trumpet player who has played and recorded with James Brown and was a member of the JBs. He is also the co-composer of the phenomenal song, Standing on Higher Ground, which appears on the Love Overdue album by James Brown. He has played on Color Me Free and the Soul Sessions Volume 2 albums by uh, Joss Stone. He was also a member of Steve Winward's touring band. Did you know that, Steve Winward's touring band? Part of that as well. And he also still performs He's got a band he's going to tell us about that he's involved with. Um, you know, it's really amazing realizing that he would be playing trumpet with the legendary James Brown, adding vocals and eventually becoming music director for the JBs, the James Brown band. The relationship with James Brown and Holly Farris began in 75 when Holly was uh, located in Nashville, which is where he is now. He was playing with his band in an Atlanta hotel lounge when James Brown walked in, heard them play, and he hired Holly immediately. Loved the sound, loved the presentation, and sight unseen, right there, grabbed him. During the course of uh, the involvement with James Brown in the 1970s, when Muhammad Ali was having his first fight with Leon Spinks, Holly and the band were invited to Muhammad Ali's suite after a sparring session and they spent two hours talking to Muhammad. And uh, Holly was caught off guard by uh, Ali's humor because, of course, we know Muhammad Ali was uh, very witty. In 1986, he became the music director, which included the duties of rehearsing the band, adding new songs to be worked uh, with as well. After spending eight years with James Brown, Harris moved on after a series of experiences and, you know, he had his time. So he would return to the band after James Brown was uh, released from, you know, that little incident that had happened. And uh, by 2007, Holly had spent 20 years in that role. Absolutely amazing. The toured the globe as well. His uh, musical relationship with James Brown lasted, of course, until James Brown's passing. Uh, in 1988, he was a member of Steen, Steve Woodward's uh, backing band that also featured saxophonist Randall uh, Bramblett, guitarist Anthony Cranford, drummer Russell Kunkel, and keyboardist Mike Lawler, as well as backing vocalist Leanne Pellin and uh, bassist Michael Rhodes. He also appeared in the 1989 music video with Steve Winward, Roll With It. It's really incredible if you see the body of work and the amount of work. Uh, again, he joined uh, the James Brown elite family of funk when James heard him playing with the popular Nashville show band and he hired him on the spot in 75. He became lead trumpet as uh, well as section leader, arranger, and later music director. And he toured again with Steve Winward. 
uh, the commitments. And for the last five years, Josh Stone, the British soul singing sensation, he's written songs as well for James Brown and jazz guitarist uh, Denny Jehosa and several television shows as well. And uh, he also earned his bachelor and master's degree in music education at uh, our Kansas State University and had a brief stint as band director and was a member of the elite 82nd Airborne Band at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. He's a very humble man, but man, is he a talented man. And we're so honored to have him here on the show. It is my pleasure. He's he's shaking his head right now. He's like, I can't believe all of this, but we're so <laughs> we are so honored to have him here. He's really, really incredible. And there he is. There is the one and only Holly Farris. How are you, sir? I tip my hat to you. <laughs> I, I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing when you hear all of that. You're like, wow, that was me. And it's like, <laughs> I did that. So how are you? How are you? You did that. Uh, yeah. now, that's really, I mean, that's amazing where you were performing there and James Brown walks in and says, there's my guy. What was that experience? What was that feeling like for you, Holly? Well, it was really crazy because the band I was with, we had been together in college for several years and then we moved to Nashville together to become famous, like, you know, a lot of bands, but uh, that was our last week together. We were finally breaking up. So it was like, you know, God sent, you know, there he, there's Brown and he hired me. And then eventually a few months later, I got our keyboard player and saxophone player with James. So all of a sudden there's three white guys in an all black band. And uh, <laughs> that was interesting for a lot of years. Very cool. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? So then uh, he put you to work right away and, and you just continue to evolve with the band and your roles with the band continued to expand as well, right? Yes, that's true. First, he, first I was the lead trumpet player, and then I became the section leader. Then I became the band leader, and then, yeah, an arranger did arranging as well mm. for him. Yeah. So you had uh, just going back in time a little bit, Holly, um, and I well, I like to ask this question uh, specifically of artists uh, and performers. Were you always sort of like the performer in the family? Did you come from an entertainment background at all? Or were you the sole one who just plunged right in? Well, my dad was a singer, a uh, frustrated singer. He would try to become a professional in his early days, but he never made it. And then uh, I guess I inherited my musical ability from him. So, mm. Yeah, I'm glad to see me continue on with that. Yeah. So, was the trumpet always your interest uh, inter instrument of choice, or was it something that uh, you were led to? Did you play other instruments first? No, I started on trumpet right, uh, the very first thing because I, it only had three valves, and I thought, well, that'll be easy. Right, it'll be easy. Wrong, <laughs> very wrong. I was uh, so wrong about that, but yeah. But I, I liked it and I stuck with it and um, it was good to me. Yeah, good, good decision. <laughs> Who were some of the people that you admired that you were listening to that were playing trumpet that turned you on as you were coming up the ranks? Uh, well, I would say uh, Herb Alpert, but I won't. <laughs> but uh, Al Hurt was actually a, a big influence on me and uh, he had – Actually, here's a trumpet player. He just played nothing but trumpet. He didn't sing or anything. And he had several top 10 hits back in the way back 60s, I guess. And uh, I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And I uh, actually got to hear him play live before he passed away. But uh, And he was still playing. He couldn't even get up on stage. They had to help him on stage, but he could still play. And that's the thing about music. You can play till you drop. You know, you can't do sports till you drop. But that's you can do music. It's exactly right. Every athlete will certainly tell you that. That's for sure. Knee pain and shoulder pain right. and everything else. Exactly. So, uh, so you studied it in school, and it's been in your heart uh, ever since. And you admired the greats, and then you picked up that trumpet and got educated in it. What was what would you say was some of the first 
early, well before the James Brown experience, what were some of the other uh, cool sort of breaks that you had, Holly, along the way that were putting you on the path of uh, everything great that's been happening? Well, I went to college, majored in music, and uh, at the time, there was, it was limited to what you could do. It's like be a band director or that's it, pretty much. Right. So went to college, graduated, taught school, and then I got drafted into the Army. And then once I was in the Army, I don't know how, but I lucked out and got into the Army Band, 80, 82nd Division Army Band. And there was a bunch of great players in there. So I got really excited about playing music with those guys because they were really, really good. And, uh, and then when I came back out of the Army, I went back to school and got my master's. And then uh, the only thing left to do was teach, and I didn't want to do that, but I've been playing with a band in, in college for years. And we just decided to move to Nashville together and uh, become famous you know, like most people. And, uh, so that was, that was it. That was my beginning right there. Mm. So what were some of those first experiences for you there in Nashville? Were you able to get right in the studio and just start recording? Were you working with a couple of different bands, uh, session musician for some other, uh, you know, leading yeah, talent? <laughs> no, we, uh, the band, we stayed together for a couple of years and became the top band in Nashville. Top band. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't do country. We weren't even a country a band. So um, how would you describe what you were? Uh, just a pop band. Yeah. Top yeah. 40s stuff, you know, whatever, whatever they wanted to hear, we'd play it. And uh, we did that for a, a while. And then we it became, we realized Nashville wouldn't, appropriate for us so we went on the road did a couple of years on the road and and uh, we set records at every club we played at and uh, i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah so that's what we did until we, we were breaking up and that week that's when uh, james came into the club mm. and uh, hired me that's so, it worked out Oh my God. So you guys were already sort of going in different directions at the time when James Brown came into your life. Right, right. We were just getting ready to split and go our separate ways. Talk about right time, right place. Huh? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez. Were the other guys excited for you or were they like, gee, we should have stayed together? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were like, darn it. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. We timed that one wrong. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about the that first experience with James. Uh, do you recall that that first time when you were actually performing with him? What that was like and what the oh, scenario absolutely. was? Absolutely, I remember this. We we got together in Augusta, Georgia, which is where James lived, and right. we rehearsed for a couple of days or three days, and uh, went on tour. We to Mexico, Mexico City, for a first performance. So we get a, we, we're on stage in this big hotel, the Presidente Hotel. I even remember the name of it. And uh, James came out in a white jumpsuit, solid white. And he came out and started doing his splits, and he did some knee drops. And I look over there, and there's big splotches of red on his knees. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. my God, is this guy professional or what? He makes his knees bleed every night. Unbelievable. <laughs> but come to find out what had happened was uh, him and his wife had gotten into a fight and uh, she jumped in her Mercedes to get away from him. And he reached in the window and grabbed her by the hair. And she rolled up the window on his arm and drug him down the driveway on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here you thought it was just because of the yeah, professionalism yeah. on stage and I going, going, you know. Going yeah. the extra mile and showbiz, yeah. A little bit of a backstory. Yeah. So that was the very first time you were with him. That was the very first show I did with him. I thought, man, this guy's unbelievable. Right. Right. <laughs> It'll be a taste of what's to come. <laughs> but actually, hit that was his work ethic. Yeah. He would he would do it no matter what, sick yeah. or or whatever. He yeah. would still do a show. 
He would always say, I feel good. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That was his thing. So, uh, so then take us again through the development of this relationship with him as time went on and some of the cool venues and places you got a chance to, to tour with him and the other musicians at around the world. Well, we played every continent in the world except Antarctica. We didn't do that one. So, yeah, we skipped that, skipped Antarctica. But uh, we, uh, we played uh, at one time in Paris for about uh, 200,000 people, if I remember correctly, which was kind of, you, well, you can't even imagine, you can't even see the end of the people. It's so many. It's like, so you don't get nervous because it's, it's him on the line, not you. So uh, are you still there? We're there. I'm just soaking oh, well, all this in. This is amazing. <laughs> this is like, you know, it's it's extraordinary. So while you were playing with James, oh, there, you got your cup. Let's do our toast. Hang on to that cup. What do you got in that cup? Vodka and orange juice. Very nice. I knew it wasn't coffee. Let's do a nice toast, Holly. Welcome to the show. Good to have you here. We'll do a clang. There, there you go. I know it's tried. Try, wow, that's a huge yeah. mug. What's it is. What, what does it say on that mug? Uh, man of wisdom. Man of wisdom. Where is it? Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I don't know who bought this mug for me because it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> man, I feel like I ought to be interviewing you, man. You're the one. You're the man. Good grief. All the stuff you've done. It's unbelievable. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Yeah, that happened last night with actress Sky Arbery. She was like, Jim, I, you know, I Google, I, I do my research on you. She says, I have some questions for you. And I'm like, really? I mean, <laughs> the little roll, turn of the tables, role reversal. Um, mm -hmm. When you were playing with James, were you able to play with other entities or were you able to do solo stuff? Could you do other commercial work, session work, anything? Yeah. You yeah. could do that. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about some of that. But yeah, uh, when I wasn't on the road with James, come back to Nashville and uh, try to get session work or play with some other bands or, or whatever. And I uh, always managed to hook up with some great bands. And uh, hi, Alan, by the way, he posted earlier. <laughs> that was one of my bands that I played with, great bands. And uh, I did session work, whatnot, you know, so, yeah, it, it, I tried to stay busy when I went with Brown, but, you know, he was always working. It's just that it wasn't continuous. We'd do maybe two weeks, take two weeks off or do yeah. six weeks, six weeks off. So, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. You know, did so. You, so did you also toy with other instruments? I know I mentioned that before the trumpet when you were you know a kid. But along the way, did you did you toy with any other instruments as well? Yes, I played some flute, uh, trombone, uh, timbales, bongos, and a little piano. Not much, but uh, some. Some yeah. more. I compose with piano, and I have some songs here if you want to hear them sometime. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd I'd love to. We we will continue the conversation. Sometimes you know we wait till later to do the music. But if you want to share yeah. something with us, and I really you know, really appreciate you doing that. Uh, what would you like to play for us right now, Holly? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, this is a song that the, the band recorded without James. It's called We Came to Play. Perfect. 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 All right. So I'll do a little intro here. My very special guest on the Gym Master Show Live exclusively, the one and only Holly Ferris. And we came to play, and he's going to do it for us right now. Take it away, Holly. It's all yours. Can you hear it? Yes. So you have background music going, right? Because we don't hear the background music. What? You have like background, like a background track. Yeah, it's, that we that we don't hear. It's very low. Do we hear in the distance a little bit? No. Is that your Jack Benny impression? No. <laughs> <laughs> Looks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say right. Can you hear it now? Is it any louder? Or is it? No. no. Still can't hear it. No, just a little. It's like way distant. We don't really hear anything. Um, 
It's probably a setting, a little bit of a setting. It's getting uh, better. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. You hear it a little bit, yeah. We don't have, we don't have play all of it. Yeah, that's it. So you got it. You can got it. All right. Ready? All right. I will. Uh, I'll let you. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. You go ahead. You do your thing. Holly Ferris, here he goes. Oh, no. Yeah, we can hear it a little bit. It's off in the distance. So you're in that playing? Yeah. Yeah. We can hear it in the distance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to get it louder. How should I? That's a good question. I don't know. There's a, probably a setting that's somewhere it's not coming through. Do you it. have you have the trumpet there with you? You can show us the trumpet too. <laughs> or one of one of there's a cool one behind you there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you can't hear it, I'll stop it. Yeah, we don't really hear that. No, no, no. One more. Well, I like that picture back there, too. It's a cool shot of you there next to the trumpet. Hey, now we hear it. Now, now we hear it. Now we hear it completely. Now we hear it. You want to start it from the beginning? Now we hear it. Now we hear it. All right, here we go. Let's listen to that.
fantastic. That was fantastic. Really, really good. We, you see, we didn't give up. We didn't give in. And the sound came. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, so your involvement with that, tell us a little bit more about your involvement with that particular song. Well, uh, that's, that was the band, J James Brown's band. We got together one time when we were in Augusta rehearsing and uh, tried to do some, we decided we'd do some of our own material and uh, we put this album together and uh, and pretty much on the strength of that, we, we're still touring actually. The band is touring without, of course, without James, but uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So we've done uh, several European tours and uh, Canada as well. And of course, we were supposed to do one this summer, but uh, you know, that's out. So yeah. next year, we will do another one. Somebody wants to know uh, behind you, there's a photo on the wall. Is that you? It's not a photo, it's a painting. That's what they asked. Me. She said, she goes, uh, Brown looking behind over my shoulder. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she she goes, is that art? behind yeah. or is it a photo? Heidi. Somebody painted that. And a, a girl named Demetria Walker painted that. And That's um, really cool. My sister had that done for me for my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I don't know if you can see it. And that trumpet that's uh, behind you too. What, tell us about that. But, uh, yeah. Really it's, nice. Look at this one. James Brown made the right choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Linda. And uh, thumbs up from Ernestine in uh, North Carolina and Linda in Florida. Sounds great. Uh, hearing this great. What so, what's social distancing? We're all grooving. <laughs> <laughs> and Rainy Katz, virtual dance party, yay. And a heart from uh, Renee in Iowa. And I know what comment. I love the way, I love to show the comments to the guests as well, because I love the comments too, because yeah. we're very interactive. Um, and you were really loving them, especially, well, this is a cool one too, from Austin Fields, it's a very cool song, I agree. Uh, Christine wants to dance, Jacqueline says, great, Holly. And then they were talking about, this is the one that got you, it got me too, I love the way he phrased this, that groove is centrally located. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But it sounds so cool, doesn't it? It's centrally located. I guess that means it's right at the heart, right at the soul, centrally located. That's Love it. Trombo Alan. friend, Alan Rumba. Yes, I uh, know Alan. He's he's a character. Yeah, I love that. It's centrally located. It. Yeah. That is really cool. So, so uh, I wanted to hear some, some James Brown stories, and I have them. So. JB, you're great and a good choice of Holly James Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's hear a story, and then you have a couple more songs you want to share with us too, right? From that, uh, yeah, awesome, yeah. Sure, great sure. stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, here maybe a James Brown story. Some of the folks are asking about that, and uh, what do you have that uh, might uh, interest our worldwide audience? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you mentioned the, the Ali thing. I, I want to yes. go and finish that. Yeah, when that's cool. I first walked into his dressing room, his suite, rather. Uh, they said, Mohammed, this is Holly. He plays trumpet with James. He shook my hand. He says, have they made a nigger out of you yet? And I'm like, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you say? Right. <laughs> Muhammad well, Ali says that to you. Uh, his quoting, sense of humor, quoting Muhammad. That was yeah. his sense of humor. It's sure. Like, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, funny guy. But, but yeah, I got some James Brown stories. Uh, uh, my favorite one is uh, we played in Georgia with the country, Georgia in uh, Russia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the venue was an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and they built a stage on one side, and the audience sat on the other side as if it was a swimming event, which, of course, it wasn't. But uh, it was built way up off the water, and uh, during sound check, James kept walking up there and looking over and the edge of the stage into the pool. And I thought, why is he doing that? He's terrified of water because he almost drowned yeah. as a child. Right, right. He drowned. So he's terrified of water. So finally he turns around to me and said, Mr. Ferris, if I jump in there, are you going to come and save me? I said, sure, Mr. Brown, I'll be right behind you. Knowing he wasn't going to do it. 
Well, the last song we played, Sex Machine, he peeled off his coat and ran and jumped into that pool. Wow. And we're like, oh, no, he can't swim. <laughs> we know he can't swim. So I kicked off my shoes and my coat. I went right after him. And uh, he, his idea was he was going to swim to the other side where the audience was. And, you know, that would be a big finale, right? But he, he made it about five strokes and then he sank. <laughs> so by that time I got to him, and I, I started dragging him back to the shore. And, um, and then I sank and then, and then a few other people contributed, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the half band in the pool. Right. <laughs> what a story, huh? <laughs> but we got a hundred dollar bonus that night. Did you really? The ones that jumped in the pool. Yeah. And saved very, his life. Yeah. Very, 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 very cool. Very cool. <laughs> You um, you have another song you want to share with us, and maybe you can tell us the backstory of this song too, Holly. Well, this is a, a song I wrote for James. It's on one of his albums, the first one he did when he got out of prison, and uh, it's called uh, "Standing on Higher Ground." Perfect. All right, Holly Ferris, take it away. Mm. That is cool. Cool stuff. All kinds of great comments. Everybody absolutely loving that. Really, really cool. So, uh, standing on higher ground, you know, great title for everything that we've been going through, even like right now. You know, you saw some of those comments unity and togetherness and empathy and kindness and standing together. And uh, it's really like an important message. You know, some of these songs that James has been involved in really have cool messages, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and uh, they, they definitely stand the test of time, and uh, they they really run deep, centrally located, as Alan said. Sure, centrally, sure. okay. centrally located, and everybody's dancing. They're like dancing to the music, party time here, and uh, and that's cool. You have another song you want to share with us too? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I wrote a song for a, a smooth jazz musician. Oh yeah, uh, Jan Denny Giosa. I think you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a top 10 hit, hit, <laughs> jazz hit. Yes. <laughs> well, I made so much money from this, I can't tell you. I must have made tens of dollars. <laughs> Is that, that the way it works? I know. <laughs> exactly. I made a few hundred dollars, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. But yeah, it, it was good. It was but, look fun. What, but look where the song got you. It got you on the Jim Masters show live. See, it was worth it. What could be better than that? Yeah, yeah. How long do we go anyway? I mean, I just I don't want to. Oh no, no, you got time. You got time. You want to play that? Go right ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody's enjoying it and they're having a good time. So, definitely. You, oh. you got you got a comment that came in here. Yeah. <laughs>
It's really nice stuff, Holly. That I love that kind of music. I love jazz and smooth jazz. It just that's really, really. Um, who are some of the other musicians on that too? The guitarists and some of the others. It's really cool stuff. Just some local cats. Local really? Cats, yeah. yeah. Really. Nobody. Is, is that available anywhere on Amazon? Anywhere? Because that's a great song. I'd love to get that in my collection. Is that yeah. something? Yeah, it's a uh, just Denny Giosa, you know. Is that's uh, it? Yeah, Denny J I A O S A. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, they they uh, what you have in the mug there? Did you say vodka and orange juice or something? Because uh, they need that vitamin C, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I love these comments. It's yeah, don't, don't I have a don't we have a great audience here? I have a great audience. They're very interactive. She's watching in Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada. Right. right now. Yeah. Cool people. Now, of course, you saw this and uh, they were being teased because they saw you grab that trumpet and uh, you play a little something for us as well. Uh, right there. I tell could, us. How about if I blend it into a joke? Yes. And then tell us about before you do that, t show us the trumpet and tell us about the, the trumpet itself, the history of the trumpet itself. We'd love to see that trumpet up close and we'll do a we'll do a full screen so you can. Tell us about that. Well, trumpets have been around forever, but when they first came out, they were made of wood. And uh, trumpet players had a guild back in the day, and, uh, and it was a very tight guild, and you had to be just really special to, to get into the guild. And if you didn't join the guild, they would track you down and bust your lips. They would crack you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no paperwork involved at all. No, no, just bust your lips and then you couldn't play. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're loving that trumpet. Uh, how long have you had that trumpet? Uh, this one about probably 10 years. I got my other one about 20 years. Yeah. yeah. They, they do wear out eventually, but um, yeah, it's just I, metal on metal. That's know? what it is. That's what it is. How do you take care of it? What are some of the things you do to keep it in good condition? 
I just give it a little bit bath every once in a while and uh, rinse it out and swab it out. And uh, that's basically it. Trumpet's pretty easy. Denny says, Holly man. Holly man. Denny Giosa, Denny Giosa watching uh, on YouTube at Jim Masters TV right now. And uh, Renny says, so many talented people, cats, as you say, those Thank those cats from all of us. Say so they're all thanking you for being here as well. Uh, we got a really good audience here on the show, viewers from around the world. All right, so you're gonna uh, put that trumpet to work. What are you gonna play? I don't know. I haven't, right. I haven't we'll, played in a while, but uh, we'll see what I'm, it is. I'm just gonna make it into a joke. Yeah, tell us the joke, guys. Go ahead. All right, this trumpet player over in England, he's got so depressed because he couldn't get any gigs, so. Um, he just gets up on this balcony and he's getting ready to jump off and kill himself. And somebody looks up and sees him. They said, man, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting ready to kill myself. I'm a musician and I just can't get any work and whatnot. And they said, well, what do you play? He said, I play trumpet. And they said, well, play us something before you kill yourself. So he says, well, okay. All right. So he goes, <laughs> and he can't remember the bridge and so he stops right there and they go oh that's great that's great man do it again but play the song play the whole song so he goes <laughs> And he forgets the bridge. By this time, a crowd is gathered, and they're starting to boo. Come on, man, play the bridge! And he, he can't remember it, so he just throws his trumpet down and just jumps off, hits the pavement, and he's laying there all broken and everything, and here comes the ambulance. <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> I can't help it. What happens when you get old? <laughs> yeah, like I told you, folks, this is light levity and love, and that was the that was the levity part. Or the, or, or the levity. Uh, <laughs> do you have another track that you want to share with us too, so people can get a good f additional feel for your incredible? Uh, talent and prowess and uh oh, goodness look at this yeah yeah you're the best i'm telling you <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's it oh uh, uh, okay let's see what this is oh wow. that sounds cool what is that uh this is a lp i did on me really nice really nice Thank you. 
amazing that is amazing now where can we find that i want that <laughs> is that available anywhere it's it's only right here that's, that's it. it that's it that's not like you didn't make that commercially available or anything oh my god that is that's a fantastic song Denny he also produced that for me and uh he's yeah he's a great producer great ah uh, if you make that ever commercially available, we will uh, scoop that right up in seconds. Are you listening to that, Denny? Yes, Denny. Denny. <laughs> get, get, get us a copy of that. I'd love to have that in my car and my stereo. I, I'm a big music buff and collector. And um, taking guitar now, I took violin in school when I was a kid. That was a that was a tough one, the violin. Oh, that's very hard. That's the hardest. The violin, the hardest, would you say? Yeah. 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 I took that in school when I was a kid and then guitar now, but that sound, that just the rhythm, the beat, just all of it. Uh, yes, Denny, we would love all of this. So release it or send it to us. Uh, really beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And that's cool. And it's great that he's, uh, he's watching tonight as well. More comments coming up. Good. Denny. Yes. We would love it. Love it. Love it. And, uh, where is Denny? Where would he uh, from? Nashville. Oh, he's right there in Nashville. Good to see you, Denny. Uh, for the folks that are watching brand new, we are here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. I'm your host, Jim Masters, and we I'm a professional television radio host, and we're doing this too. And uh, I agree. Yeah, I play the violin too. Uh, I didn't know that, Renee. Congratulations. That's not an easy one to master as well. We should still release this. I... How many watching right now would love this song <laughs> released so we can all have it? Oh, yes, it. yes, wow. yes. Let's get a gym master. A lot of the viewers say when you watch the show, you're on the gym master's train. And by the time you're done with the interview, like the guest, you've got a master's degree. <laughs> okay. That's cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's a shame it's not available. So we're getting a little uh, vibe going on here. People want it. They want that song then yes and that, that really is cool especially now uh to hear that kind of music that lowers the blood pressure and gets you feeling really good we need that stuff look up uh, they're putting the look they're putting the orders in already holly and denny see my my uh audience they they are very uh passionate and enthusiastic people so north carolina ernestine wants one canada wants one Iowa wants one. So uh, New York City wants one. Five, Connecticut five. wants one. <laughs> Six. Do I have seven? Yeah, you have seven, eight, nine, seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, New Hampshire wants one. Yep. I'll, uh, see, I'll buy one. Yes, please. There you go. Sign me up, Denny, Alan says. What was the, uh, Alan has mentioned something about the Saudi Arabia Prince story. Is there a story with that? Actually, it's Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. Tell us about that. We were booked to go to Morocco and play for the king's brother's birthday party. In other words, the prince, the prince's birthday. So we go over there to Morocco, and the warm up band is um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's the warm up band. Okay. <laughs> we have to follow that. What a warm-up band, huh? Jeez. Right. Yeah. And Eartha Kitt. I forgot about hers. Eartha Kitt. Eartha, Eartha Kitt? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then us. So James was in one of his moods. And uh, so we were, we did the show, and we get down to the very last song, which is Sex Machine, always. And 
we were down literally to the last minute of the song, of the whole show and the prince whose birthday it was jumped up on stage and started dancing james stopped the show grabbed him by the arm and drug him off the stage and everybody in the audience went <gasps> and we did too we like you don't touch the prince or the prince of Saudi Arabia. you know yeah 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 well yeah so uh but it, it was you know okay it was okay we finished the show and we didn't get beheaded at least no. yeah so but they did take us back to the hotel and took us straight to the airport <laughs> we, we had heard that they give rolex watches to all the you know musicians and whatnot and Mm. We were looking forward to that, but no, we not that night. We no, straight to the airport. We didn't even go through customs. They just walked straight to the plane. Get out of the country. Go away. Go away. Have you been back since? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Rolex waiting for you. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> One I'll never see. I guess that's that's incredible, huh? Yeah. What what um, when you look back at all this. You know, and and I'm sure it's been ever, ever ever since you decided to go into music, and even before James Brown, um, but then post James Brown and during James Brown. When you look at all this, Holly, could you do you ever pinch yourself? Do you ever say, "I can't believe that it's turned out this way"? Absolutely. I mean, growing up, you know, and being in college and playing in bands and hearing James Brown on the radio and whatnot, you was like, "Man, that's about the coolest thing that could ever happen would be to play with somebody like that." And then, lo and behold, I ended up playing with him for 23 years. So, yeah, it was it was. I mean, it had its it had its moments where it was it was rough and it was difficult and all that. But and the experiences I have, I wouldn't take anything for it. And uh, I, I just I'm grateful. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Oh, I went to the James Brown School of uh, Funk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I learned by fire. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you said that, that the, the group still performs together. Right. JBs. Yeah. So that's really cool. And, but there was also another, you were saying, is there another band that you're also doing some stuff with maybe locally? Yeah. There's the other. Yeah. A local band. Uh, I play with a big band also that I direct. And uh of course, we haven't been playing either since the pandemic, but this other band, we've done a few Facebook concerts, and it's just a bunch of old cat. The requirement to be in this band is you have to have a gray beard and a gray, and gray hair. You have to be all gray. Totally That's, gray. Yeah. <laughs> but, Seasoned yeah, veterans. There's <laughs> some good players in the band. One guy played with Steppenwolf, and uh, one guy played with the... Uh, wow, that's cool stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Various people. Very, yeah, yeah. But good, good players and they're good guys. So, mm. it's yeah, yeah. Have you ever ended up doing anything, um, you know, um, music, session music for like um, television, movies, uh, commercials, things of that nature? Uh, no, well, yes. Uh, me and Denny, as a matter of fact, Denny Joseph, we wrote some songs and uh, had them placed in, in various TV shows. So, really? Did some of that. Do you remember which ones we might recognize some of the shows over the years? Uh, uh, Denny will probably Denny. chime in if. Uh, were popular. Yeah, come on, Denny, help me out here. Denny, what TV shows would we recognize that you guys were uh, providing some of the music for, Denny? Uh, I think he's busy working on getting that released tonight, that other right. song everybody loves. What was the name of that song? People were asking. The one one right. Yeah. No name? No name. Wow. So I'm, I'm open to names, suggestions. I'm open to um, let's see. The, the Jim Masters show, new theme. I think I like that. <laughs> a good way to begin the show, the vibe of light levity and love, right? I think I like that. It's a good way to begin. Hi, Jim and Holly. There's Eileen in uh, Western Australia, just uh, oh. east of Perth. Holly heard some, lost contact back. Ripper, she's having a ripper of a time in Australia. I love uh, playing Australia. Boy, boy. Yeah. That's so Australia is the best. What uh, cities did you play all, all across the country? Yes. Uh, Perth. We played uh, 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 Melbourne, Sydney, uh, some, uh, 
Tasmania. Oh, Tasmania, uh, really? Wow. The Tasmanian Devil. Got to see uh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what was that like? <laughs> mean looking critters, man. They're really mean, vicious. Yeah, because that's the only other time we probably saw them was what on Bugs Bunny or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the cartoon, cartoon version of yeah. Tasmanian Devil. Uh, right. Denny's trying to remember the TV shows where the music um, he's watching on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. Uh, just want to remind everybody, all the shows are archived. So if you missed anything tonight, joining us late, or you want to see this again, or you want to share the link, just go to YouTube, Jim Masters TV. This episode, all the episodes are there. He's trying to, uh, Denny's trying to remember those uh, TV shows that you guys provided the music for. That's, uh, you know, you get something like that, like a theme to a TV show or, you know, a theme to like a commercial campaign or getting involved with like jingles, which used to be bigger earlier years than it is now jingle. I used to love all that stuff, jingles and themes and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, you would hear a theme and you knew what product it was or, you know, what car you were driving, whatever, based on the theme, which yeah. I think is really, really cool. And you can get into some really cool work, you know, that way, the, the jingle singers too, the singers that would be backup singers, vocalists for major stars. Work who then were, Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah, the king of all the jingles and yeah. right. And, and Alan Thicke and uh, a lot of these guys that wrote all these themes and all these great uh, shows. Oh, there's one there. Oh, really? Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Chicago Med. Oh yeah. Chicago Med. That's wow. Um, Heidi asks, uh, Holly, where was your favorite place that you played? Is there a place that just, when you think of it, wow, that was an unbelievable venue gig experience for you. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Australia. I really did. Australia. I had some fun times there. Some fun times, great shows. Uh, somebody loves Tasmania. I do too. Yeah. But yeah. I love playing in Japan. Mm-hmm. And when I first started going over there with James, they would sit there politely. And then after a song, they would, you know. Yes. It. But by the time the last few shows we did over there, they were just riotous and uh, jumping up and down like everybody else, like in the rest of the world. So, yeah, absolutely. They loosened up. They loosened up. Yeah, they really did. Uh, so a so couple of people asking about different genres. Uh, have you dabbled into country music and, and other stuff as well, uh, either collectively with a group or independently? Uh, country, no. Yeah. Not that much. I have played on some country songs, but uh, yeah, it, there's not too much demand for trumpet on country. Yeah. So. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, jazz, a lot of jazz. Uh, another great uh, trumpet player who's in the smooth jazz world that I got a chance to, uh, well, a couple of them. Dave Koz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Bode. Oh, yeah. Well. Have you worked with or had any connection with those guys at all? Never have. I yeah. met Dave Koz, and that's it. <laughs> Dave Koz, yeah. Yeah, I met him a couple of times. I interviewed Chris Bode on public television. Really nice guy. All regular guys, you know, they're just regular guys. They love what they do, like you. You, this just is what you do. You love it. It's you don't see anything beyond just the the enjoyment of playing for people. And I know that gives you a great blessing when you look back. The ability to be able to just do what you love. You've got the education. You got the skills. You got the chops. The background. The years put in. But when you pick up the trumpet and you just go. It's tough to put that feeling in words, isn't it, Holly? Well, absolutely. It's it. You know, I just, like I said, I felt so grateful for being able to do this and have made a living out of it, you know, and uh, being able to share my music with other people. And uh, it's, tr it's a tremendous feeling. It really is. Have you had uh, like a dream list of people that you'd like to do uh, duets with or would like to work with who are still around now? Duets. <laughs> There's a lot of great trumpet players out there, but I wouldn't dare get on stage with most of them. There's, there's some of them are just so beyond me, so in the stratosphere. That's, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a plugger. I'm not. There. Did you? Uh, I'm sure you were a Miles Davis fan. Oh sure, yeah. Miles, yeah, yeah. He was different. He was a different kind of cat. Play with his back to the audience, you know. Stuff right. Like that. Just, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even, um, I know it's, it leans a little more, uh, you know, easy listening, beautiful music style, but even like a Ray Conniff was really talented with his trumpet too. Conniff and, you know, that whole background there. Oh yeah. I, I like to listen to the old big bands and stuff. That's I mean, great musicians, man. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get any better. So, um, what have you been doing lately, you know, during all of this craziness of the last couple of months uh, to keep creative, to keep busy, to, you know, stay in touch with people? What are some of the things you've been doing, Holly? It's certainly been a crazy time and music is so important and it's so healing and it's just calming. Uh, and it takes you back to maybe the first time you had your first romance or your childhood or some good feelings that wash over you when you get some good music going. What are some of the things that you've been doing to keep going through all of this, Sally. It's been a rough situation, weird time. I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a... I love your honesty. <laughs> Best policy. <laughs> now, this other band I play with, we've, it, it's called Beaker Street Blues Band, but they don't do just blues. And it, we've started doing a lot of other stuff from the 60s, 70s, 80s. And it, it's like a, a time trip. You know, it's yeah. going back to the days when you were young and just starting to play music and hearing all these fantastic groups like Chicago, Blood, Sweat and Tears, groups like that. And uh, it, it's fun to bring that stuff back. You know, it's we don't want to lose it. No, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, I would imagine, too, um, you ever get a chance at all to um, come across, you know, the youth or as far as like mentoring young minds or people that are, are up and coming musicians, up and coming uh, trumpet players and maybe give them advice or, or guide them a little bit along the way. I have done that, but I would like to do that a lot more. And thank you for saying that because uh, that's going to put the bug in my ear to start to do that. If we ever get back in school, uh, you know, who knows with that, with the COVID thing, but uh, I, I would like to go out to the high school and just uh, donate my services to whoever wants to learn something. That'd be good. Absolutely. And Denny says not to forget our top five smooth jazz hit you, uh, you guys wrote. Which one is that? I played that already. Life's of the City. That's the one. So that was a top five smooth jazz hit. Wow. Cool. Congrats. I tell you, the sound is really, really awesome. More uh, coming in here. Although this leans country, this question a little bit. Didn't you play on the Grand Ole <laughs> Opry with Mr. Brown? Lynn McGraney. Yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. us about that. That's a cool story. Well, that, that was it. Hi, Lynn. Oh, love you. Hello, Lynn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, actually, it was our keyboard player at the time, Mike Lawler, that uh, he, knew, he knew Porter Wagner who was the MC of the Grand Ole Opry. And he suggested to Porter that we get Brown on there, which was totally not appropriate for the Grand Ole Opry, but we did it. And uh, we got up there and, and uh, did three or four songs. And then by the end of the four songs, people were like, okay, we're ready for uh, Roy Acuff now. Or, uh, <laughs> Cause they, you know, they just didn't get James Brown. That was totally, you know, whole other, yeah. 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 Whole other vibe. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Is there anywhere that you haven't played that you've always dreamed of playing? You know, a lot of artists have these uh, dream venues where they would love to play. Is there anything where you haven't yet, but boy, that would be a cool place to play. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> played a lot of places. Yeah. La Scala. Of course, that would be for opera, but uh, yeah, Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. I've never played there. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, Carnegie, yeah. the Acropolis. <laughs> uh, no, never played there, but I played near it, very yeah. near. It. Yeah, the one in uh, London, Royal Albert Hall in London. I played that one twice. You did, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Once with Steve Winwood, and once with uh, Josh Stone, I think. Yeah, yeah. Very so. cool. Another question from Heidi. She asked, do you ever visit New Orleans or New Orleans? Uh, there's so much blues and jazz there. I do. I went down there and on a vacation once, not too long ago. And uh, it's just the, the amount of musicianship in New Orleans is stunning. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 
every club you go into is a different band, different musicians, and they're all incredible. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's so many, right? And, and if they're lucky, you know, a James Brown walks in <laughs> right, right. and says yeah. you, you know? How lucky was I? And so that really is an amazing story. I mean, have you ever thought of writing a book or telling the story, uh, autobiography or anything? A lot of people have asked me. That I'm sure they have. Do it. And uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's your own story and it's a beautiful one. So what are some of the things that continue to bring you joy and blessing in your life that keep those creative juices going and keep you inspired to, to play and uh, keep giving us all this great music, Holly? Well, uh, like I said before, it's a, uh, you know, age doesn't matter. No. As as musician, you know, you just keep going. And um, I, now that we've had this COVID thing, I've s sat down and started composing again. And, and it, it, that's exciting to me. And uh, I just want to keep playing, playing with the, as many bands as I can play with and tour when I can. But. You know, I toured for 44 years, so, you know, I'm almost done with that. <laughs> I'm uh, almost done with touring. A lot of people don't realize what it takes to provide entertainment. Even, you know, in my world, in television and radio and all of that, to to, to do a movie or to create a TV show, to be a part of some, all, all, not just the, the wiring and the lighting and the technical aspect and all the people involved, but what it takes, especially to, to, to make it look so easy in all, you know, we're all artists, we're all creators. So to be able to take stuff that makes it look so easy where the audience watching or listening uh, will say, boy, I, I could do that, you know, sort of inspires them and hopefully they do do it. But not realizing sometimes whether you're in a studio, recording studio, television studio, radio, you're on stage, on location, whatever it is, there's so much work that goes into even. I've been on I've been on sets where I was uh, an actor in a in a commercial a series of commercials in New York for an appliance TV and appliance chain, and they were doing 30 second commercials, and we were on set in one of the stores <laughs> for like 12 hours for a 30 second commercial. I know, I know. Yeah. So they don't realize, and touring too, as exciting as it can be, there's so much work and all the elements have to be right. The flights and getting there and the venue and right. the weather. And it's um, from your experience for people watching who have never done touring and things of that nature, Tell us about what it's really like to go on tour and, and how involved it really is for everything to then be perfect. And then you got to perform the next night. And the next night, it's uh, it's incredible, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, sometimes you don't even see a hotel room. You just go straight to the venue, play another show, get back on the bus or plane or which whatever the case may be and, and go to the next place. And uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing that, that we could actually uh, could actually go through that and do a great show but it seems to me that the, the, the more tired we were the better show we did which makes no sense but um, you know we, we would do whatever it took you know with the last, one of the last shows that James did we played in Argentina and um, to show you what his fortitude is like he was really ill i'm not sure what was wrong with him but he was at the hotel and he has on a catheter and he was on iv fluids and, and i mean that, that's pretty serious and when it came time for the show he just unhooked it all and went and did an hour and a half show and then went back to the hotel and hooked it back up mm. <laughs> so it's like and it wasn't about the money he didn't care he had plenty yeah. of money. he was just showbiz he, you know he was scheduled to do a show and he did it that, that was his ethic and, and I, that stuck with me because you know you you, you commit to something you should yeah. do it, you know well i'm sure there are times where you had to be on stage or you had to be in a studio and you had to perform and maybe you were under the weather but then once you know, the action's going, the adrenaline takes over, your body, right. mind over matter, your body forgets that you're not feeling well. And during that performance, right. you're on point. 
But then the minute that performance is over, your body reminds you, you know what? You're still not feeling well. You're sick. Right. I had that happen a couple of times when I was on the air. I was doing a three-hour show on iHeartRadio, and it was a Friday night, and I, I was supposed to be um, you know, on, and it was just me as a single host, and I was on live for three hours. And I knew when I was going into the studio, something wasn't right. The voice didn't seem so right, and I was getting a little out of it. But then as soon as the mic went on, three hours straight, the minute the show ended, it was like, Bricks hit me, 103 yeah. fever, chills, my voice disappeared, and the body said, you know what? You were live on the air. You had to do it. There was nobody else who can hop into the seat and cover you. You had to be on. You had to do it. But then the minute my mind didn't have anything else to concentrate on, like the task right. at hand, the body then took over and said, guess what? You're up a creek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what happened with that. Yes, uh, Absolutely. It's what happens, you know, you just, when you got something to do and there's nowhere else to go, you just take over and that's that stamina. That's that blood on the knees moment. Yeah. <laughs> but for the right, for the right reason. <laughs> what would be uh, one thing about Holly Farris that maybe um, we don't know? Is there anything uh, like thing, hobbies, different things about you that maybe uh, we don't know? Well, I'm a lover of dogs. I yeah. Love yeah. Dogs. Yeah. They yeah. keep me company. Uh, my wife passed away five years ago, so oh, I know, I know. The dogs, and uh, they're they're great. And dogs spell backwards, of course, is God. You know? y yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, man's best friend. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Absolutely. Um, Christine asks, "How many times did you play the Apollo?" Oh. Uh, twice. You twice. did. Yes. That must have been an incredible. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. a small place. You would you would think it's bigger, but from the films and whatnot. But it's it's very small. But people are like right in your face, so it's it's very intimate. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, Holly, I tell you, uh, is there any? Is there one more song you can spring on us before we wrap? Anything else you got there uh, that would? Uh, be well, cool to hear. I mean, it's such good stuff. <laughs> I love you, man. Thank you very much. You know, they, they made a movie a couple of years ago, and that's what it was called. I forgot who started that. It was called I Love You, Man. That I was actually you, a movie. That's yeah. it. That I got a, commercial that. a beer commercial, too. <laughs> it was a beer commercial, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we going out on this? Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, well, we'll have you come back. We'll do a wrap, but if you have something, we'll play it now, and then we'll be back, and we'll tie up loose ends. Right, yeah. Right. Let's see what I got here. Excellent. You're the best, and we really appreciate all the time, and, you know, you're really, uh, you're amazing. I've always admired your work, Holly, and uh, oh, wow. these are great stories. These are really great stories, and uh, what is this one? That's another one of mine. This is just me. Me and Danny. You guys gotta release this stuff. We love it. All right, here we go.
That's really cool stuff. That has to be released. <laughs> that stuff. I mean, everybody's like, I want it. I want it. I want it. And, you know, uh, that's really, really cool stuff. And, and you, you guys were just jamming and then recording. What? Tell us the story of you know this music. Well, uh, usually what happened would be I would come up with a groove, and then Denny would come up with a melody, a great melody, and we'd put those together, and and he would produce it and come up with all these incredible guitar lines and bass parts and whatnot and produce it. Unbelievable. And you guys have been working together how long again, Holly? Probably 20 years. We, mm. we were in, a, in a cover band together. That's how we first met. Wow. That's cool. That's really amazing. It's good. You know, when you get a chance to work with people like that and collaborate and it must just be a really cool experience. And then you come up with something like what you're sharing with us tonight and you hear it and you're like my god that's really good good stuff you know what i mean it's uh, it's, it's, it's got to be an awesome feeling for you guys huh it, it is it is it's well yeah yeah absolutely well definitely uh if, you, if you're able to share that with us uh we're here we will definitely consume more of that so cool to hear these insights ralph says and and claps and so awesome and Thank you, uh, Holly, for sharing your talent and your stories with us. Again, we've got the best audience around the world here, best viewers on the Gym Master Show Live. Thank you, Holly, for sharing your beautiful gift with us as well. And that's what it's all about, right, Holly? It's uh, providing joy and uh, good music and good times for people. I uh, Cheers I to that. Yes, I sir. toast to you, sir. You got anything left in that mug or uh, do you have to refill? <laughs> <laughs> Toast to you. You're the best. You're you're really uh you are, man. You're the best. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You're a cool guy, you're talented, you're humble. Uh it's the way it really should be. <laughs> you're a rarity, actually, in uh, the entertainment industry, you know. And it's uh, and it's really cool to to meet somebody uh and break bread in this virtual way with you. And I really am honored that you spent this amount of time with us on the show, shared your stories, shared your music. We've got uh, some great folks who have been following you who are here and new fans as well that discovered you. Uh, love you, my brother, Denny. Thank you for all of this time as well, you know, chiming in with your comments. Feel free to release that music. We'll scoop it up and hope you'll watch the show. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Great guests and so much more. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow night, we got a really cool guy. He's a TV film and Broadway star, Lance Roberts. He's coming on the show tomorrow. Thank you, Holly, for sharing your beautiful gift with us. And thanks, Holly, for sharing your music and stories with JB. Really cool stuff. Well, um, Holly, I certainly hope um, this show matched whatever expectations you had of it. And I certainly hope uh, you enjoyed your time That's with great. us. This was fantastic. I really did enjoy it. Yeah. I, I appreciate that and uh, try to make a comfortable, easy atmosphere and just conversational, and let it flow. And uh, I think that's when you really get the best stuff, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Nothing too hot, nothing too heavy. Uh, thanks for your great interview. It was a pleasure. Have a great night from Heidi in Connecticut. Holly, all the best. You stay well. You be well. Thanks for all of the time. You're welcome back on the show anytime you like my friend and it's a pleasure and let's uh, let's stay in touch i hope one of these days we get to 
really toast in person and break bread. Really, <laughs> I would love. I'd love to do that. All right. Thanks for being on the show, sir. It Thank was a you. pleasure. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Oh, you are very welcome. You have a good night, Holly. Okay. Keep Bye -bye. playing that music. Okay. That's it. Take care. The best, huh? The best. Yes, a class act. He still sees the comments. He's off sort of in our green room with the champagne right now and the uh, cheese and lobster that we have for him. <laughs> uh, he really is a class act, isn't he? And he's so humble and he's just amazing. More uh, toasting coming in from Ernestine in uh, North Carolina. Hey, folks, thanks for all the great comments, and uh, we really appreciate this. We're so glad that you had an opportunity to tune in to the show tonight. I want to remind you as well, and we thank a very special guest, legendary musician and trumpet uh, player extraordinaire, Holly Farris. What great stories, too, about working with James Brown and, and Denny, of course, joining us and, and so many others. Really cool stuff. And um, he is just a super, super talent and as humble as his talent is. And uh, that's really refreshing. You know, I get a chance to, in my work on television or radio, I've interviewed probably about 6,000 people uh, in my various forms. And um, it can get, you know, there's some interesting people you come across and uh, not everybody is always as humble as, um, as uh, he is. And it's very refreshing, actually. Thank you for a wonderful interview. I appreciate you. We appreciate you as well. Uh, this is the Gym Master Show Live. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Not only do we do phenomenal guests, we take you on location. We've done food. We've done just about everything you can think of. And a couple of things to remember, as we always do and always say here on the show, got to grab this over here. I always tell everybody to inspire you guys. I might be the uh, star of the show. Uh, the host and the star, as they say, right? But you guys are the stars. You and you and you and you. You guys are the stars. That's how I think as your host and uh, producer of the show. You guys are the stars. And we love having you here every night. Again, I do this professionally, but uh, this show we created 10 weeks ago, and it has been a blast. Really, really cool stuff. And um, I showed this when we were playing the music. We'll show it again. I show this every night at the end of the show. Relax. Uh, take time for yourself. Breathe. We've all had to pivot. We've all had to be extra creative these last couple of months. Some really interesting times we're living in. But try to relax. Love one another. Take care of one another, everybody. And um, spread a little sunshine and a little levity all around the world. That's what we're trying to do every night here on the show. Spread some uh, light, levity, and love, or as we call it, levity. Another comment coming in here. Jim, thanks for your guest tonight. It was great. Good night, everyone. God bless. A pleasure to have you here all the time. And we've got great guests tomorrow night. Lance Roberts. Google him. You'll see everything he's been in. He's been in major Broadway productions as a Broadway star, television, film. He was just on Law and Order and so much more. Great actor and performer. He will be on tomorrow night. And you're not going to be, you're going to be bowled over by the amount of people we have coming up. But even that, it's you and I. That's the whole show is the host, the viewers, and the relationship that we have, that we foster and that we grow and that we celebrate. So whether we have a guest or not, it's always good to turn these lights on, have created this home studio, and to uh, have a good time with you guys uh, every night. Only once in a while we're not on, maybe a Sunday or something. We spend time with the family. We live along the coast, so we want to get out and enjoy the beautiful summertime weather here. But generally, it's been... Uh, so cool to have you guys here. And again, this show is only 10 weeks old and um, we're having a blast creating and producing it and hosting it for you. Great uh, smiles and hearts coming in here. And Alan, as JB said, we want the groove to be centrally located. I, we, that really knocked, uh, knocked him out, um, Holly, uh, when you said that, Alan. And I saw it and I loved it. I like that centrally located in anybody's bag. Uh, the feel somewhere between Fats Domino and Neil Sedaka. That's a good, good combination. Neil Sedaka. I got a chance to work with Neil Sedaka when I emceed a concert at Carnegie Hall, and he was one of the guests. It was for composer Tim Janis. I host these um, uh, and MC these beautiful holiday concerts with top talent that uh, Tim brings, brings in. 
And Tim and I met when I um, interviewed him on PBS on public television. We've stayed friends ever since. And Neil Sedaka. And Neil Sedaka is such a great talent too and a wonderful guy. What a great interview that would be uh, to get somebody like Neil. Uh, good night, Jim and everybody uh, from Jacqueline. And uh, good night from Renee in Iowa. You too as well. And Heidi says good night. So we will be here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. I promise as long as you guys are here and you share the links and you have watch parties and you subscribe to the YouTube channel, that really helps the channel. YouTube with all their algorithms, same thing with Facebook. They've got all these algorithms. Like the Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. Follow, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Gym Masters TV, Twitter at Gym Masters TV, and YouTube. If you want to see this episode again and groove with us, if you want to see any of the episodes, just go to YouTube and all of those uh, great broadcasts of the Gym Masters Show Live are there for you. So you guys have a good night. Thanks for being with us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Love having you here. Truly a blessing and a joy in my life having you here and meeting all of you and uh, having great guests like Holly Farris tonight. He doesn't normally do this. It's something special he did just for us. And uh, appreciate uh, my mutual friend who uh, hooked it all up. Got so many people that want to pop on this show. and. Uh, Love it. So, love it to all of you around the world. Thanks for a great night tonight. Thanks to Holly Farris one more time. This is Jim Masters. Thank you for your time this time. Till next time, tomorrow night, I'll be here, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. I hope you're here too. Be well. Peace, everybody. Take care. Love one another. We'll see you on the next episode of the Jim Masters Show Live on YouTube at Jim Masters TV and Facebook at Jim Masters TV. Have a good night. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.